What's up, guys? Believe it or not, Samurai is still here. I'm starting to get my shopping order. And I'm gonna let me know. Uh, let, uh, let me tell you, it's feeling really good. I was kind of overwhelmed there for a while. You know, all the move and all the boxes and all the stuff and just being totally burned out from all that. And uh, But Samurai started to make a comeback here. Uh, we got the, the chop saw stand is in now. Still trying to find all the uh, little brackets for my lumber rack are still hidden in some box. That's the crazy thing about moving. It's like you lose all your bearings on, on life and especially all your stuff. <laughs> And so, slowly as I unpack these boxes, it's all coming back. And I'm just trying to work on the layout right now, so I'll show you what I got here. All right, so we've got the garage door here, man door. Got the gun safe installed. Hunting season's just begun. Uh, and then this is all kind of tentative. I don't, I'm pretty sure this is where the table saw and planer have to go. Um, I've got about enough room coming in this way to do a 16 foot piece, which is typically as long as I'd ever want to rip on the table saw, right? And I can go out the back, the door here if I need that extra length. So that's nice. And then I've got the planer beside it. So it's the same as I kind of had in the old shop because that worked really well for me. But this shop is 24 and a half. So it's about a foot or so wider than my other shop, but it's only 30 it's about 10 feet shorter than my shop, which was about 40 or 39. This is about 20, 29. So, and, and just the layout is different, obviously, right? Because I had the post in the middle before, but the garage door was here, right? And then I had all the windows along there and my workbench. And then the back wall was, so it's kind of similar to this. And I guess if you include this hallway... It's almost the same size as my other shop, but the layout is just weird. It's different, right? Because now I've got the door coming in from the side. So I kind of have to keep a bit of a path through here because, you know, that's the door to upstairs. And so I'm just trying to figure out where the workbench is going to go. It's, it's uh, challenging here because the workbench is taller than the table saw. So it can't get in the way of cutting on the table saw. It also can't get in the way of feeding stuff through the planer. So I've kind of got this little dead space in here. I think I might swing this 90 and move it a little closer to the wall. You know, the welder and my metalworking stuff, I just don't have room for it here. But thankfully I do have a single car garage upstairs that I access through an alleyway. Um, so I'm gonna put that in the upstairs garage for now. That's where I kind of store my ATV and and I don't really use this stuff a whole lot except for my belt grinder. It might keep that down there, down here, just for sharpening chisels and knives and stuff. Uh, but I do have this, my big glue up table and I'm like, I think I might ditch the old rollers here, which weren't even that great anyways, and use the glue up table as my outfeed table and just kind of butt it up against there. But then it's kind of cramping, cramping this area here where I like to work at the workbench, right? And so, for some reason, even though the shop is not significantly smaller, it feels it feels smaller just because the layout is is awkward. But the nice thing is we got these eleven foot ceilings. Uh, that's that's awesome. So maneuvering with material in here is is pretty good. But uh, yeah, so I still got boxes of stuff that I'm going through. I finally got my little shelf back up again and unloaded a few boxes. So my sanding's good. Now I'm going to be building outfeed tables for this joiner because that was one thing I really, one thing I did not enjoy about my other shop. Even the joiner was, the joiner was in a good spot. I didn't have an infeed or an outfeed table for the joiner. And whenever I was doing stuff that was longer, you know, eight plus feet, 10 feet, you know, it, hanging that off the end was really frustrating. And, you know, I'm going to be building these, a barrel sauna. I've got a big lift, a 2x6, 13-foot 2x6, rough sun yellow cedar out there that I'm going to build a barrel sauna and a barrel bunkie out of. I'm going to try and get two. I'll be a little short on material, but I can always get more because the mill is literally five minutes from my house. A huge sawmill. That's basically the whole town. It was built around this sawmill so I can get really affordable yellow cedar 
they stock it there, rough saw in all different dimensions. They can custom mill up to 20 feet. So awesome. So um, as far as woodworking is concerned, I'm even more in heaven up here because I'm right where all the logs come from. You know, this is where all the loggers, you know, bring all the logs and process it before they ship it down to Victoria and make me pay way more. So, so yeah, I'm going to build some outfeed tables, in feet, out feet. I can do up to 16 feet with this nice long wall, the way we got it here, which is awesome. And then underneath those benches, I'll, you know, put some shelving and be able to store boxes. I'm not going to get crazy on the whole customizing the shop because this is a rental, right? I don't, I don't want to put too much money and time into setting this up. So it's going to be pretty basic, just plywood, two by four benches um, for what I need just to be able to get all my stuff off the floor. Um, yeah, I got my big tool chest down there. And I'm just kind of still feeling out the layout here. So I don't know if you guys have any tips. You know, it's tricky because this place used to be like a daycare at one point and it was like a tattoo parlor. So it's got these two little vanity sinks, you know, wash sinks, which are, I guess it's good to have a sink down here and there's already some storage in those, but they're kind of just random, you know, and they got the space in the middle. So I'm, I'm gonna put my mortising machine there and I'll store what I can in these drawers. So that's nice that they're already built, but it's just kind of weird. Like I don't need two of the same sink, but it works, right? Don't have a dust collection closet. So, and then I'll probably run some ducting up to the ceiling and uh, over here down the post to run the planer and the table saw. Those are the main ones. And then obviously I'll have to Y one across to the joiner. Um, I don't even think I'm going to bother with dust collection on the bandsaw and like other tools. The only other tool is really the, the horizontal belt sander there. Um, but that thing kicks up a ton of dust anyways. It doesn't even go down into the dust chute very well. So I'm going to just, I'll just have to clean up that. I don't know if that's where that's going to go. The, the other annoying thing is they've got this little kind of divider wall in here which you know it's kind of screws with the flow a little bit but i don't want to rip it out and or i can't really rip it out so i'll just work with it so i've got the the scroll saw drill press here this might stay here but i don't know i don't really have room to put it over there with the clamps and everything and just yeah it's tricky but we're 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 getting close to making things work here. Just gotta get all the unnecessary crap out of here. You know, I'm just gonna plug my compressor into the wall somewhere. Might be able to tuck it over behind the, beside the mortiser there. And then I'll have a functioning shop, right? So I got my paint cabinet back here. We've also got like a rec room, guest room down in here where the kids do their homeschooling and, and play. Hey Carver. And uh, it would have been nice if that was a part of the shop, but uh, we needed that space for, for that stuff. So I can make do with this. It's a pretty sweet space. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments if you guys have any ideas on layout, you know, links to any uh, space saving storage solutions, that sort of stuff. And uh, stay tuned for some new shop builds. The samurai hasn't left, you guys. I'm still here. Just had to take a little break for my mental health. But we're getting back into it now. So if you're still watching, thank you. Uh, it means a lot, all the support you guys have given me over the years. And uh, yeah, it keeps me going. But man, there's a lot of work ahead. And I uh, look forward to showing you guys the model for the cabin. I'm about... Uh, safe, safe to say I'm about 30% drawn up on the cabin build. Got the layout and all the wall, like the you know floor plans all set. I've got the roof and and the timber frame starting to draw it all up on SketchUp now. So as I get closer to that and really dial in all the joinery and posts and and get everything set up and I have a frame to show you on the computer, I'll show you guys what we're building. And let me tell you, this is going to be an insane build um other exciting news is i'm going to be uh hopefully purchasing a mini excavator and so we're going to have a little mini hoe out there to be able to 
carry big pallets of lumber around and excavate the job site, put in roads, do all the, you know, real heavy lifting. So that's exciting to get that. Once I, once I get that, I'll, we'll do a video, show you the machine and hopefully get it barged out there. So lots of exciting stuff coming guys. So be sure to stay tuned, stay subscribed and uh, yeah, good to see you. So I'm just building some real quick and easy uh, workbenches, I guess, or I'm gonna be using them as in-feet, out-feet tables for my joiner here. And so all I do is get a, couple, a bunch of eight foot two by fours from the lumber yard, sheet of plywood, right? Rip it in half to two feet, two feet by eight feet. And then you cut your studs to eight feet exactly and just frame out a little tabletop, some two by four legs. And then I'm going to put a little secondary shelf underneath it so I can put tools and stuff on it and just get them out of the way and up off the floor. And these are great if you're on a construction site, you know, you're building a house or whatever. Just having a couple of benches to work on different stages of the build, it's really handy to have. And, you know, you build them out of construction material that's usually on site. It takes a couple hour or so. And Got yourself a nice workbench, right? So, Back at my favorite store here, gotta pick up some tarps, cause winter is coming. Right, so I got more 5-8 shackles, a couple 15 by 20 tarps, and some of these chain tie downs here, as well as some 3-8 chain, because Samurai's buying some machinery. So, like I told you, um, I'm like shaking, I'm so excited. Uh, the camera, uh, you can't talk. Uh, my new paintbrush showed up for the uh, property. So, let's go take a look at the biggest 
cool purchase I've ever made in my life. tracks are mint on this thing it's only got 25 hours on the machine just brand spanking new oh man love it all right so i got all the good two by fours out of the lift up on the rack here and on the floor that should be enough to build the uh barrel bunkie and I've got, still got a bunch left on the trailer here, which I'm gonna use to build a deck platform. So I gotta take this out to the, to the lake tonight. And I'm, so I'm gonna go do that and get that done, hopefully before the dark niche comes. And then bring it back and load this bad boy onto it so that it's ready to go out tomorrow morning on the trailer. Get the barge, get it out there. Ooh, exciting. All right. Easy does it. Got her all loaded up. Time to head back. And just like that, the skiff is unloaded. Sorry, I should have done a time lapse, but uh, the neighbors let me use their bobcat, so I was like, so it saves me a ton of time. And I don't have enough battery on my phone for that anyway, so. Just giving you the real, real world scenarios here, okay, people? It's not all high production value. It's just, it's just reality. Probably tell my stress levels are a little bit elevated right now, but we made it to the launch. Uh, weight of this thing was dragging me down this little hill. My brakes on, I was a little nervous there, but we didn't go in the lake. Now the crazy part is we gotta go get the barge, bring the barge over, ramp this thing up onto a barge without sinking it. I know the barge can handle the weight because it handled a bigger machine um, a month or two ago, but that doesn't mean I am a barge master. So this is going to be a little high stress, but the water's calm. There's no wind, so that's good.
Well, got some screws, got some boards, and I am embarking on a new adventure. We're about to find out if one man can take a 30 foot square barge, pilot it by himself with a skiff, load an excavator, bring it back, land it and unload it by himself. So place your bets. You're either gonna learn how it's done or how not to do it. But I will say, people that have bet against me, well, hasn't fared too well for them in the past. But if I'm being honest, I, would, I think I might bet against me today. No, don't, 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 Jesse. Have a little faith in yourself. Oh, I'm 50-50 right now. Might have to abort mission, but either way, guys, either way, this is going to be a learning experience. Buckle up. Okay, so here's the barge. got those big ramps on the front there that's what we're gonna have to hinge onto that bracket to load the ex excavator so I got to get my boat mounted on the back side here where that little tow bar is except I don't have a tow bar and so I'm gonna brace the boat with these boards that I got here Okay, got my little makeshift uh, brace here, bolted to the either side of the boat so I can kind of pull in both directions. I've got it kind of locked across there as well so I can reverse and the barge should stay attached. Okay, and this is just gonna be a real slow go kind of thing. I'm gonna take it out in the water and uh, see if I can just steer around check my steering see how the maneuverability is There's still no wind here so conditions are perfect and then just start putting back through the channel over to where i uh, parked the mini let's do it Coming through the channel, so far so good. Sun's coming out. Oh yeah. La mala. Okay, well, thankfully, uh, Brad there helped me out. Uh, he was just taking his boat out and he stuck around to help me get this machine loaded because that would have been really hard to do by myself. And I would have liked to film it, but I forgot my tripod. So, hey, we got a machine on a barge and we're going back to the lake now. When we're on the lake, we're going back to the property. So let's move. I fit here. All right, now that we're off the shore, I'm going to get out into the water a little bit. I'm gonna move the machine forward a bit because it's off centered right now. I had to drive it back this way just to get the, uh, the barge to let go of the shore. Well, it's gonna be a beautiful trip back.
just in case you thought you were having more fun than me. You're not. This is just so fun. Stressful. But now that we're more than halfway there, the stress is coming down, the fun level's coming up. Oh, loving it. Should probably go steer my boat though. We're uh, heading a little off course. my little access road here at the neighbor's place I gotta go up. Just so you know how much of a noob I am, I was so excited that I got the thing off the barge without dropping it in the water that I immediately just like drove it up the hill and over to my lot. And then I got over there and I was, I realized, how the hell are you gonna get those ramps back on the barge? And I left the dig bucket down here. <laughs> so I had to drive it all the way back, man. You gotta remember, whatever you do with the excavator, you have to undo with the excavator because these things probably weigh like a thousand pounds each. So, learning not to rush things, you know, that's a hard thing for me to learn. Well, lads and lasses, I sure hope you didn't bet against me. This is Samurai, I got it done once again. She's home safe and sound without a scratch on her. Yeehaw. Oh man, the fun is just beginning. I gotta tell you guys, the struggle is real. When you have a mini excavator and a giant forest to explore, it's really hard. I'm telling you, you know, first world problems, I get it. But it is really hard to want to do siding on a cabin. But I know I should be doing the siding, especially seeing as this weather is insane for October. And uh, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to just let the excavator sit for a couple days here. It's always going to be there. The force is going to be there. But I do need to get the siding on this cabin. So I need to finish strapping this side with 1x4. I'm not going to do as many 1x4 because originally I was going to do this with Cedar Shake. And so I had to put the 1x4 a lot closer together for each row of shingles. But now that uh, shingles are ridiculously expensive and hard to find, I'm just doing this with board and batten, some yellow cedar 1x10. So I don't need quite as many, so I'll probably do half, half as many strappings on the front here and um, get the flashings around the base, put the belly rand or fascia around the, the back two walls and uh, just start getting some boards on here. Now, the other reason, which is justifiable that I haven't done the siding this summer as well, it's been the craziest summer of my life. Uh, we sold our house and moved, all that fun shenanigans. And, uh, but the other more important reason is you don't want to put on green, freshly cut siding or wood of any kind on the exterior in the heat of summer. And you can probably figure out why, because the heat and the dryness sucks all the moisture out and the wood cracks and warps a lot faster. So now that we're getting into fall here, the colors are changing on the trees. We're getting some nice cool evenings and mornings. It's still warm during the day and we haven't had much rain, but, um, there's enough humidity in the air that I can put up this wood, even though it's you know fairly fresh sawn. It's kind of been drying. I don't have it stickered or anything. So it's still pretty fresh cut. Um, but once I get this up here, now that it's cool, it'll slowly dry throughout the winter time. And then come next spring and summer, um, it'll be a lot more stable and won't be cracking or warping as the when the heat comes. So 
you want to do your exterior woodworking in the fall, ideally. The other, if you do too much exterior woodwork, like fresh cut wood, um, and you do it in the middle of winter and when it's raining really bad, everything's kind of swelling, swole, swollen, everything's swole. And, uh, and then when the summer comes, it kind of shrinks and gaps and cracks start to form. So there is kind of like a sweet, a sweet spot, which I find is kind of right at the end of summer um, into fall. If you can time to do your exterior woodwork kind of early fall, you know, so that your wood is still dry. Everything's not super soaking wet, but, you know, you're not putting it up in the heat of summer. So it's going to crack up. So that's just my two cents. Now that I'm done talking, let's screw some boards to the wall. Well, the weather's good here. I want to get another coat of uh, Odie's oil on the door here. Um, seems to be holding up pretty well. I only put one coat on it. Didn't even really let it dry and then brought it up here and installed it. Now it's starting to fade a bit. Should have put, you know, probably at least two or three coats on it, especially on the outside here. The inside's still looking pretty good, but uh, I got kind of dirt and smudge marks and dog scratches. So I'm just going to give it a quick sand just to kind of get the fingerprints and some of the pitch little bubbles that come out classic fur you get these when the hot days come out the pitch kind of oozes out of the pores and you get these little pitch bumps all over everything so I'm just going to try and sand it down a bit make it look as good as I can but hey we're going for the rustic look out here so I'm not going to get too too crazy with it and then just get another coat on here because the rains are coming. Oh, look at that fresh jar. Well, there she is. Looks brand new again. I like the, the fact that, you know, with Odie's oil, you don't even have to care. You don't even really care about getting it on the metal because it's just like a natural oil. If anything, it just highlights the metal and puts a protective finish on that too. You don't got to worry about residues and, you know, drying or whatever. You know, like a varnish wood on it. You don't want to get varnish on your handles. But with Odie's oil, you can just go right around it. It's such a forgiving finish. And damn, does that look nice. Well guys, I just drove out to the property here in a t-shirt. It's probably 25 degrees Celsius, maybe even hotter. And to my recollection, I have never been in a t-shirt boating in gorgeous sunshine in October. Not in my neck of the woods anyways. So that's awesome. And it's supposed to be beautiful and sunny like this all week. So got to take advantage of it and get some work done out here at the property. 
should stop calling it the property. Heartwood is what we've named this beautiful little paradise that we're developing. So I'll call it Heartwood from now on. I wanted to take a time. I wanted to take some time just to like give you guys an update on where I'm at. A lot of things are changing in my life, um, physically, mentally, spiritually. Uh, all good things from my point of view. But one thing I've realized is although I'm super grateful for the journey thus far, I do feel like we're moving, I don't know, in a new direction maybe, or just, it's just a different stage of life. And um, I think a lot of us are ready for it or looking forward to it. Um, I, I'm not sure where you guys are at for, as viewers, you know, if you're new to the channel or you've been following for a long time, but I'm kind of done with uh, making just project videos, you know, like, hey, look at me, I built a table or whatever. Um, not to say I won't build more things, uh, but I think the focus of this channel needs to become a little more honest, I guess, real, authentic, whatever word you want to use. Um, I'm not going to just put on a smile, build something, film it, and throw it out there for you guys to consume anymore. It's not really my passion. Um, my passion is, is life, to, to live a full and deep life experience. And I think not incorporating, you know, my spiritual experiences, uh, my mental health experiences, everything that, you know, I am into, into these videos would just, I don't know, I don't have any desire to not share everything that's going on inside my life uh, anymore and just kind of compartmentalizing it and being like, hey, I just build little things on YouTube. Um, that's still very much going to be the focus of this channel because I'm, I'm a builder. I, I have dreams and I can't help but pour all my energy into manifesting them. And I think a lot of you guys are the same. And so that, you know, will always be the core of this channel but we need to get into the why, um, the truth of what this costs, the sacrifices that are involved. Um, I really want to just give you guys a full understanding of this experience. And in order to do that, you know, it, it's got to be raw and real. And I know I've always been pretty raw and real, you know, at certain times throughout the journey here, these last like, I don't know, it's been like nine, almost 10 years I've been doing this. It's crazy. Decade of my life, you know, on film. And uh, uh, but just to give you guys some perspective, we, you know, we've moved from the city I grew up in, Victoria, up to a little small town up island that only has about 15 or 17,000 people living in it. You know, Victoria was about 400,000. So it's quite a shift. And, and I'll say that so far we are absolutely loving our life up here. Uh, my wife, my kids, everybody, we're just grinning ear to ear, experiencing all these new adventures, exploring all these new spaces and um, spending so much more just quality time. We've uh, cut screens out of our life as much as possible and we'd like to pare it down even more. Um, so we've got rid of our TV. Um, we don't, we don't um, put shows on or let our kids have very much screen time at all. We, you know, maybe we sit down 
and watch a few YouTube channels that we like to follow, like Bucket List Family or Gridlessness, other families that are just living their dreams. And, you know, we might watch one of their little 20 minute videos together once or twice a week. Um, but other than that, we're, we're trying to be as screen free as possible. And that's brought about just a tremendous, um, goodness into our life. Uh, especially my my special needs son Asher um, we used to be heavily screen dependent on on helping and just coping with you know all of his challenges and we noticed that it was just having a terrible effect on on his psyche and and his mental stability and emotional you know all of it and so we decided to just cut it right off and uh, he's become just a completely different child so that was definitely the right choice but you know it, it requires a lot more engagement on our part as parents um, I would say that uh, things are going to be changing in the channel because now that we live in a small town a couple hours north of Victoria and my brother-in-law Adam who's been doing a lot of my editing uh, it's just too much back and forth to try and get multiple videos out each week so we're going to be transitioning, we're going to be transitioning, sorry my nose is itchy here. We're going to be transitioning to longer format content. I don't know what that's going to do with the algorithm or, you know, whether any of you guys are interested in that. But that's the only way we really see um, a path forward with this channel and sharing what's, what's happening, what, what we're developing here. So we're thinking maybe a once a month or maybe twice a month video that'll probably be 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, and that'll take a lot of pressure off of us as far as time spent editing and, you know, transferring footage and just all the back and forth technical sides of things. And we also think that it will allow us to create just a bit more of an in-depth narrative to what's going on here which aligns with where my heart is right now just wanting to be totally real and honest and share the whole experience uh, of what we're doing out here and one of the things i noticed the other day when i when i barged the the machine out here i did that by myself you know i had a little help from a, a random guy, Brad, to uh, get my ramps in place to load the machine at the boat launch there where I was loading it up. Uh, but other than that, I, I transported the barge there, I transported the machine back, I unloaded the machine totally by myself and everything went beautifully. And it was just such a great day to, to see like my competence level has obviously grown a lot for me to be able to do that by myself you know moving a 30 foot square barge across the lake with the, my boat and you know having never done that before um, but it, it shows me that through all the failures and the mistakes that you guys have seen if you've been watching this development for the last year and a bit I've been making a lot of mistakes but those failures are paying off now because um, I'm finding my groove and my competence level and my abilities are growing and that to me is is really encouraging uh, just because who I want to be I, I want to be in a state of growth my entire life I don't want to be the same person that I was 10 years ago today and and when I'm 50 or when I'm 60 I don't want to be the same as I am now I think that would be a waste of life. Uh, so it excites me to see that I'm changing and that I'm growing as a person. Uh, my wife and our marriage has, has become just so much better, so much deeper intimacy, connection, communication, um, spending more quality time together, getting as much of the busyness and unnecessary um, noise out of our life just being peaceful spending time walking in the forest all of these things that you probably have a desire in your heart to do similar things if you're not already um, let me confirm that that desire 
is something you need to pursue for your own well-being. <laughs> and, and I fully support and encourage you to do that, um, no matter what the costs. Uh, we've sold everything. Um, we got rid of our mortgage. We sold our beautiful house that I spent seven years uh, fixing up and passed that on to somebody else who wants to, you know, keep doing that work and finish all those projects. And that's great. Um, I have no regrets letting go of all that work. Um, doesn't bother me to leave it all behind because I'm bringing my hands and who I am with me and I can create more things, more beautiful things anywhere I go. So I don't really get attached to my work. Um, but I will say the feeling of uh, offloading a, a million dollar mortgage is amazing. Paying off my truck, our boats, all of our debts, taxes owed, um, credit cards, everything and being 100% debt free and having money in the bank and being able to buy a, a, an excavator with cash. Uh, all these things are just a tremendous blessing in our life because we were fortunate enough to time the real estate market and, and benefit from that um, in a huge way. And we see that as a blessing. I don't necessarily know if it was just luck or what, but we took some serious risks and and just throwing our house on the market and it sold and we got a really good price for it and all these things just fell into place. And it seems like, it seems like when, you know, the only thing I can say to explain it is that, you know, I feel like we all have like a divine place in this life. And if we have the courage to find that place and to risk everything to find that place, um, things will, will fall into place to allow you to find that spot, that place where you're supposed to be. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with your dreams from your childhood. Because all I ever wanted to do when I was a kid was live in a cabin in the woods, and here I am, living in a cabin in a wood in the woods. Not only that, on the most beautiful lake I've ever seen, um, with crystal clear water that you can see 30, 40 feet down. It's just uh, we're pinching ourselves, you know, that that this is now our daily life. I get to commute to work on a boat. <laughs> Right now it sounds great because it's 25 degrees and sunny and glassy calm, but usually by this time of year it's pouring rain and cold and blowing wind and nasty, but I still love it. I love it all. It's all part of it. And, uh, and I welcome all the challenges that are to come, and I know they'll be hard ones, but that to me is what makes life worth living. You can't experience the heights of joy and peace without the depths of pain and sorrow and grief and all the other things that come to us in this life <laughs> seeming no, no matter what we do. So this channel is going to be about our journey from here on out. Um, we're going to just share all the hard stuff and we're going to share all the beautiful wonderful stuff as well and let you just see if uh, this is a life that you want to pursue, if you see the peace and the experiences that we're having here as worth you know, risking or shifting the things that you're doing in your life to pursue a similar path, or if you're just looking for encouragement to set out on your own path, that's completely unique and, and uh, because all of our paths really are and unique in, most, in many ways. And no one person's experiences is, is the same as everybody else's, even in, if they're doing the same thing. So I hope you guys can get on board with all of this. Um, I hope that the channel can stay, you know, productive and, and, and we can continue on this journey. Um, 
but all those things said, you know, we still need to make money. And so the, the YouTube channel, which, you know, honestly doesn't make a lot of money in it, just the YouTube channel. Um, it's, you know, the other things like my online little woodworking school and, and woodworking community and, and different income streams that we have, sponsors mainly, um, are the only way that we're actually keeping this channel going sponsors like Odie's Oil and and Princess Auto and the other companies that you hear us working with um, we, we try to align ourselves with sponsors that that don't require any conflict of interest meaning you know they're products that I've always used um, products like U2 fasteners which you know is a relatively new um, fastener company but I've tested all their stuff and it's top notch. Um, I'm using it pretty much for everything I can. And I really stand behind those products and those, those sponsors and they seem to really support our channel consistently and wanting to work with us long term and that allows us to make this content really. Um, so yeah, in a perfect world we wouldn't have, have to have any sponsors or anything like that. but. That's not really the case because even in your life, you know, your parents sponsored your upbringing, you know, hopefully if you had good parents and, you know, friends and teachers and all these people like invested in you. So in a way, it's similar to have sponsors investing in this channel and this journey that that my family and I are on. And I'm grateful for that. And, you know. We're going to have to continue to work with sponsors that we, you know, products and sponsors that we believe in, in order to keep this thing going. And I hope you guys can respect and, and understand that, that that's just kind of a necessity in order to make this work. I, I've tried to make it work every other way I can, and it doesn't seem to do to pan out the same way. So we're always on the lookout for long term sponsors that, you know, share our vision, want to help us on this journey. Uh, companies that have, you know, reached out to help us with our, our solar system, right? Creating, you know, the electricity that we need to live out here. You know, companies that um, provide me with fasteners in order to build and, you know, finishes to put on the wood and all these sorts of things are, are necessities, things that I would be spending money on regardless. Um, and so having them uh, give us product and pay us to promote that product and share, you know, the experience that we're doing, you know, that that's what makes this possible. And, and that's what makes us uh, able to share this content, which I hope entertains and inspires and educates you guys in some way, shape or form. So yeah, look, moving forward, you know, having said all that, I'm really excited. You know, there's a new passion, kind of. You, you've probably noticed that I was kind of waning in my enthusiasm, you know, making the same old types of videos, you know, the last year or a bit. But now that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of listening to my heart and, and following my dreams with a little more reckless abandonment, uh, I'm actually excited now to, to create a new form of content, you know, longer format, something that we can you know, add narration to and hopefully make a more in-depth, valuable experience for you as the viewer, um, as opposed to it just being these quick and easy, throw it together, get it out there, you know, quantity over quality type production, uh, which is what, you know, it seems the internet wants, the algorithm or our egos, our whatever appetite for entertainment, it's, it doesn't really work for me that way. And so I'm excited to pursue this new um, format and hopefully it pays off, but it might not. And if that's the case, then we might have to shut her down and maybe I'll go back to doing contract work or find some other way to uh, continue on this this process this dream but I really do want to share share the process with you guys uh, we might who knows there might be a TV show down the road um, nothing set in stone at this point but we're kind of pursuing a lot of different avenues 
uh, to share our story, to, to, you know, get it out there and hopefully inspire other people to abandon the, the rat race of life and to just follow their heart, take the risks. And so, yeah, that being said, I'm not going to waste any more of this sunshine. It's time to get the chainsaws going and blaze some trail to the back of the property into the unknown. I've never been back there. It's too thick a bush. Too many fallen trees and brambles and, you know, thistles. But now that I've got my machine and some chainsaws, I can start clearing a path, so... I was going to start on the siding today, but man, that machine is just too much fun. And I really want to see what's back there. It's like a kinder surprise. Not everybody knows what kinder surprise is. Everybody, kinder surprise is everywhere, right? It's like opening a present, you know? Clearing back all the bush to see what's back there. New places for buildings and hobbit houses, and Ewok villages. Let's get to work.